our presence on the local social media pages started to grow because I was just so excited about um, being part of aviation. Like I wasn't, I was no longer an observer. I was, you know, part of it. Yeah. I had also gotten involved with the Arrow Valley Flying Club. Um, shortly after joining, I asked the president if I could help in any way or get involved. And he was like, well, we've never had a social director. And I said, cool. And within three months, of starting that role, we doubled the membership of the flying club. And so we needed amazing. Uh, we needed more airplanes. We only had two airplanes in the club at the time. We needed four now. And so Steve and I started looking around for an airplane and true story. I actually wanted a high wing. Uh, Cause that's all I knew, you know, up to that point. Um, and I was only, I was right about four and a half, almost five months into my, my training when we found the warrior, Steve wanted a low wing. I wanted a high wing. We actually compromised and said, okay, we'll get a Cardinal because it's a high wing that flies like a low wing. But then we found the warrior and it was beautiful. And I thought, okay, well, this is intimidating. I don't know how to fly that airplane. I only know how to fly a 172, but it, it's a love story how we got to that airplane and, and how um, we wound up buying it. And so it was meant to be, we flew her home and, uh, I did my private pilot check grade like two weeks later. So it took me five and a half months of training. And this is all also while working full time and having a family. So, uh, but I, I was so committed. Like I was determined. Is that it right there? That's it. There she is. There it is. <laughs> That's my girl. Very nice. Yeah. If you, I mean, do you want to hear the story about the airplane? Of course. Sure. Okay. So I didn't want the airplane at first, you know, but we were, well, Steve was trying to convince me to buy an Archer because it was a 180 horsepower low wing. And he kept telling me, once you go low wing, you'll never go back. And I was like, whatever, just give me my high wing and let me fly. Um, well, then <laughs> he kept sending me articles on low wings. And then we came across the warrior on, it wasn't barnstormers. It was one of the other, you know, uh, websites, you know, airplane selling websites. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, this is a really pretty airplane. It's my two favorite colors, you know, blue and another shade of blue. Um, it, you know, had a pretty basic panel, but it was good looking, you know, standard six pack, dual VR, DME and an ADF. I was like, heck yeah. You know? Um, and then, uh, we, uh, so we, Steve reached out to the seller and the seller actually told him, well, um, the airplane's about to come off the market because I've just promised it to another buyer. And I was actually kind of heartbroken because I was like, wow, that was a really pretty airplane. I, you know, even though I didn't want a low wing, like something just drew me to it. Um, well, about two weeks later, Steve calls me when I was at work and he was like, Hey, do you still want that airplane? And I was like, wait, the warrior? Yeah, the warrior. It's like, dude, don't play with my emotions. It <laughs> turns out that the what had happened was the buyer that was going to buy it could not secure financing. He was a student pilot and he was trying to get the financing. His finance company would not finance the airplane because they were missing logbook number one. Oh, well, hmm. Our finance company said, we're cool with that as long as the logbook number two goes back at least 25 years. Logbook number two started in 1992, which was exactly like almost to the month, 25 years. Oh, wow. So we were like, okay, that's great. So we, we got everything set up in escrow, got the financing. The night before, Steve and I are airlining up to Seattle to go uh, test fly the airplane and then subsequently fly our home. The seller calls us and says, guys, you're not going to believe this. He hit, was in the hangar digging out all the stuff to give us for the airplane and found logbook number one, which had <laughs> fallen down behind uh, his uh, filing cabinet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got the full logs on the airplane. Nice. Um, yeah. So we it's went. meant to be. Exactly. We went, test flew her, loved her. And then over the course of two days, we flew her across the north you know, to Rapid City and then down south the next day uh, down to DFW where, where she lives today. So very, that, very cool. Yeah. It's almost then, like they have a, a life of their own. 
I'm telling yeah. you, it's crazy. So that airplane was definitely meant to be. And then just kind of a, you know, on a joke, one of our local air traffic controllers at Denton called it the long warrior and <laughs> the name stuck. And so ever since then, I mean, she's been affectionately known as the long warrior. <laughs> she's, she's famous as well. <laughs> Um, Do y'all use that as as a call sign when you guys check in with Denton? Uh, sometimes, Long Warrior Cabin Whiskey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, when, whenever we do a flight of two, it's always Long Warrior Flight of Two. You know, right on. Oh, yeah. so have you converted to low wing, or are you still you know have the affinity for the high wing? So I do have an affinity for the 172s. I, I have a lot of love there. Honestly, though, guys, I'm kind of an all wing person. Like, give me an airplane <laughs> and just let me fly, but. Yeah. Um, I think the reason why my airplane became so well known is because I took this basic airplane. I mean, it's a warrior, right? Yeah. But I fell in, I just hardcore fell in love with her and just with aviation in general. And I, I literally anthropomorphized this airplane and beca- and just put her out there. And because of that, people were like, you know, started noticing, noticing mm-hmm. the airplane everywhere and her popularity spread. So I wound up doing all, um, so I started my instrument training and that's where I branched out using other instructors because Steve started, um, because of our social media presence, he started getting offers to fly corporate airplanes again. So he started getting back into that and I started having to use other, um, individuals. And, um, I actually wound up meeting, um, one of my best friends in the whole world through that process. Uh, Kevin, he joined our flying club and then, I was like, hey, I need some commercial training or I need whatever. And and so he would start helping me with that. And then um, one of my best friends, Marcus, he wasn't a flight instructor, but he was like, I'm always down to go fly. Like if you need a safety pilot or whatever. So mm-hmm. I've met some really, really great friends, you know, through this process. In fact, all of my really close friends now um, are all in aviation, you know, that I met through this process, except Heather, of so course. Cool. She, Heather's the OG, you know. There so. you go. Uh, yeah, yeah and her and I are still close today. So it, it's amazing, and we've said this now for years here on the show: is the aviation community is one of the smallest communities on the planet. And what I mean by that is, you never know. Oh my who gosh! You're going to be flying with next, or who's going to be your chief pilot next, or you know, yeah. It, it's a very tight knit community, and we all have that passion, which is a little different than I think other professions. Um, yeah. I think other professions, you know, you have a career, you have a job, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have an income. Uh, unfortunately, some people, that's all they can say. Oh yeah, I've got an income. We have a passion. And with that passion, yeah. when you, when you see someone else, the only other time I ever saw anything like this is, uh, back in college, I used to uh, ride a motorcycle quite a bit. Uh, and it didn't matter who you were, didn't know each other. You always waved, you know, gave, gave yeah. the, gave the heads up to the other. Oh, rider. you ride a motorcycle. I ride a motorcycle. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, so that's the only other time I've ever seen that kind of just unsolicited. Hey, what's up? Um, but in aviation, it, it's, it's, it's something else. And the fact that you found that in a very short period of time and you acknowledge it and are, are really welcoming it into your life and your lifestyle uh, says a lot. Uh, you-